Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Chris Badgett, and today we have a special guest, Charles Bird. He's an Evernote expert, and he has a course on Evernote called Zero to 60 with Evernote. And we're going to get into that, and we're going to get into how to use Evernote yourself as a course builder. But first, Charles, thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Chris. So I've, I've uh, noticed a trend in the online course world uh, with software. It's usually not the company that makes the software that makes the best training or the course or the how to use this software. I just noticed that. I don't have a reason per se. I'm still waiting for somebody to build the, the killer Lifter LMS course. <laughs> or, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I think uh, like <clears throat> there's a guy um, – Joseph Michael, who has a course, Learn Scrivener Fast. Um, but it, and you just see it where like or the people that teach you how to use your 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 computer software aren't the people making making the software. It's just an interesting trend. Can you tell us your just your the quick journey of how you became a course builder and and why Evernote and how it came to be? You bet. So um, I worked in the Silicon Valley as a director at a big software company. And uh, a couple of my friends had started businesses in the Bay Area making wooden sunglasses and wooden watches. And it, that was the first time I realized, wait, my peer group can start companies and be successful at it. No one told me. So uh, then I thought, well, great. What wooden product could I make? And I went to them and they're like, no digital products, digital products, no inventory, no shipping, no this, no that. And then uh, pretty much literally one of the big light bulbs went off over my head and I'm like, I've been doing this stuff anyway. I've been putting on corporate trainings for 6,000 people. I've been producing videos. I have a technology background. So it was kind of funny that I didn't notice that before when I decided to build an online course. And then I just listed out different topics that I could teach on and there was about 40 and then I was narrowed down what what am I actually really good at that narrowed down to about 12 and then I just thought of this list of 12 what has personally helped me the most with everything I do every day and Evernote was the top of that list and so I did uh, probably a minuscule amount of research just to make sure there was uh, a market for that, um, Googling the topic, and then just said, I've got to start somewhere. That's exactly where I'm starting. And so that's how I dove into the topic like very early on. That's really cool. And how long has this journey been from picking Evernote to where you are today? Okay, so I'd say probably, well, a little over a year, probably a year and a half, but um, I've been managing some other things. Uh, other investments and, and things I was working on. So when I actually dove into it, it was just over a year ago. And uh, I pretty much had the course in pilot. And then I discovered our common friend, Danny Inney and his course builders uh, laboratory and uh, snapped that up. And so that was helpful to give me a framework for um, really launching the course and making it more successful. And uh, in that process, um, I also started booking partners for Danny for different promotions. And uh, that was very helpful in learning both uh, not just how to make courses and launch them, but the, the invaluable relationship side of course building. Because when we build courses, we want to get them out to people. And um, learning how to leverage joint ventures and like different people with audiences already that would be a, a match for that is a amazingly powerful platform to grow a business very quickly. We can talk a little more about how that's transpired too. That's awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about like how your course sits today. Is it like a side project? Is it like a, a full on business <laughs> unit or full time job? Like where in this year or year and a half, where are you today? Okay, so to break that down, I had the, the course going, but I was booking partners for Danny for nine months. 
And then uh, that got me pretty good at um, building relationships and aligning partnerships. Um, so the whole time he was my biggest client over that nine months, I did, not, uh, I did six webinars. And one of them was to the Project Management Institute because I'm a certified project manager, but six. Um, <laughs> then I started booking a lot more for my course. Now I book two to six webinars every week through partners. And it, um, Danny and I agreed that it didn't make sense for me to continue booking his when my course was taking off. So since going full-time at that, which was about five months ago, um, we've grown the list from somewhere around 600 people to 8,500 people, and it's growing at a rate of 2,000 a month. We've reached 500,000 people in the last five months. Wow, that's really incredible. That's really incredible. Um, if you're listening to this, this podcast, uh, go ahead and make sure that you're on the Lifter LMS email list because we're going to be doing a webinar with Charles very soon so that you can kind of get more. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this episode, but we're going to go deeper uh, in, in how you can leverage Evernote to, you know, achieve some of these results like you're hearing about here. Um, well, let, <clears throat> let's transition, Charles, to talking a little bit about, get a little bit tactical with people in Evernote. On this podcast, we talk a lot about the, the challenge or the chaos, if you will, and I know you're kind of the kill the chaos guy that course right. creators face. And I've been around course creation for quite a while. And I noticed that uh, I, I've been involved in some like really big launches and I've seen things that are doing okay and some things that aren't going well at all for the course creator. And what the, the difference between the ones that are really successful and then the ones that are not so successful are there's these four different skill sets that need to happen, uh, which are not always, it's very unique to find the abilities in one person. So maybe, um, you know, that the, the secret to cracking through is getting uh, another contractor to help with something or a business partner or grow the team. But those four areas that I've discovered are community building, uh, the actual expertise itself, like becoming really good and sharp at something, Evernote in your case, and not looking at that as like, a in, okay, I got it, I'm good, I'm no, I don't have to get any better. We all know what it's like to have a teacher who's teaching the same curriculum from, you know, 30 years ago or whatever. Uh, <laughs> then there's the, the third category is instructional design. And then, you know, the packaging of the course and, you know, formatting the learning experience from an organizational and multimedia and strategic perspective. And then the fourth area is to wrap all that in technology, a learning management system, a membership site, an online course, what have you. But if we go to the first part, community building, how can we le leverage something like Evernote for community building? And before you answer that, just in case someone listening hasn't heard of Evernote, can you describe what it is? Uh, certainly, yeah. 92% um, of the audiences I speak in front of around the US and Canada, 92% have heard of Evernote. Three-fourths of them have Evernote. And then I'll ask, how many of you have it and know you could be making better use of it? It is inevitably around three-fourths of the hands shoot up um, there. Basically, Evernote is a... A tool that is on every platform you could imagine and it is a way to um, a platform to create information whether you're writing it whether um, you're capturing your own ideas recording your voice bringing in pictures you've taken so you are the author and source of the information or you can also collect information from all kinds of sources because uh, we're hit with a barrage of information that comes at us from all directions via email, the web, paper documents, receipts on the cell, on the phone, at work and at home. And it is enough to drive you crazy. So uh, I, I like having and teaching um, about having systems and tools that you can trust and workflows that enable you in Evernote's case to collect that information from all those sources, whether it's paper, business cards, handwritten notes. Um, basically anything from the web, you can, uh, drag files in there. You can, as mentioned, record your own voice or even search for 
text within pictures. So you can take a picture of a sign or a menu or this or that and search for words inside the photograph. So again, it's a place for you to get things off your mind or capture them and a place to collect from other sources. So that's, that's uh, in a nutshell what Evernote can do. That's awesome. As far as, to, yeah, it, the neat thing is it, it can become kind of the hub of um, where and how you track information. And uh, in the webinar that we'll do, I'll teach people how to put their finger on anything within five seconds, basically just using tags and search um, and a few best practices and you can be up and running very quickly with that uh, superpower. That's awesome. Well, how would I how would I leverage something like Evernote for community building? Okay, so for community building, uh, that could be done various ways. So let's let's start out in the research phase. You you want to figure out who your audience is, so you can find those communities. So uh, Google is your friend, uh, Facebook is your friend, and you can uh, you know start finding people in the areas that, that you want to be a leader in or you want to contribute to. And so basically by doing the research and then using Evernote to start collecting that research, you can use a tool called the Web Clipper. So let's say you found this perfect Facebook group or this great um, community online. Uh, you can capture that information right in Evernote and tag it with you know, research for community building some uh, ambiguous note title like that tag. <laughs> um, so it can be used that way, or if, if you're researching specific leaders in the space, um, you can capture all of that in one place. And the whole idea is the internet's a very big place, but if you can find what you need and then capture it so you can assemble the information in a simple to find way, um, let's say you're doing research for your, your course, it's an amazing tool for for outlining and and uh, capturing the topics that you want to teach about. You could just start with a simple outline, and then start on the research to populate the different uh, subject areas that you plan to present on. That's really cool. That's really cool. I think it's it's kind of like if we're building a community or trying to figure out these Facebook groups that we should be a part of, or we need to start one and what, what ends up happening if you live in a world of chaos or just being a human being is you forget like, Oh, you, you see this great web page or that you see this article about this person tomorrow. You, you might've forgot Evernote is kind of like outsourcing your brain and your, uh, your memory so that you can actually, it's not that you can hold more it's that you can let go de-stress. It's got a place. You've got an organizational method to go in there and pull it out. And uh, that's super powerful because it's all about the fundamentals. I mean, if you are looking to develop, to develop relationships in your industry, uh, it's, it's important to have like a kind of a list of people you want to keep in contact with. And then, you know, you can time block some time on your calendar to make sure you reach out and connect and deepen relationships. And a tool like Evernote just makes that whole process organized. Yeah. I really like how you articulated that. It's, um, it's getting things off your brain and of course the Evernote icons and elephant it's memory you, you can remember basically anything in fact the last uh, call I was on before we were chatting here the woman introduced me to some new tool um, that is similar to Infusionsoft and I'm not going to re remember the name of that tool but I just used the web clipper and tagged it as tools of interest and uh, I've, I can pull up all kinds of unique tools that you know, otherwise you'd be like, someone told me about a tool, but what was that? Where would I even find it again? And who introduced me to that? Um, but I can tag it with tools of interest, maybe the product name and, and the name of the person who introduced it. So if I go, oh, Chris was telling me about a tool. What was that? Well, now I have a path to find it very easily. Or if I'm like, what tools of interest, uh, you know, you can just pull up a list and the info, it's very easy to find. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, what if I'm uh, what if I'm a, an expert in something and I want to teach online or I'm already teaching online and I want to get better at my craft? How can you use Evernote for 
develop, getting better at being an expert in your, your chosen field? Yeah. Well, again, with, with the research for one, um, number two, uh, just getting your own ideas and workflows out. I do this all the time because one thing I've found being, I'll call it an expert in certain areas, certain behaviors you're doing that make you successful, you don't realize you're doing them. So sometimes you need to stop and break down, um, oh, this is one thing I'm doing in this process that's making it work, and you actually just write the step down. So that happens frequently where uh, I'm doing something unconsciously that's effective, and then when I realize it, that's the, that's the little bell in your head that goes, ah, time to write this down in Evernote, and then you can tag it with, whatever the project you're collecting that for's name is, or just tag it with ideas. Um, just an easy way to get back to it, to refer to when you're actually in front of your computer and you're you know, trying to assemble course content. Um, and briefly back on the, the relationship side, uh, Evernote's invaluable for that. Every meeting I take, the first thing I do is open a new Evernote note. And as we're chatting, I'll tag it with your name, I'll tag it with the word notes. And then if we're talking about, you know, learning platforms or launches or, you know, research, you can simply tag the conversation based on what you guys talked about. If you're doing introductions for each other, you can add a tag for that. So um, that way, we could talk a year from now, and I could pull up every conversation we've had and pick up right where we left off. And any important email you send me. Um, in fact, the one you sent out recently covering all the main features of, of uh, Lyft or LMS, it's like I can just pull that up and watch it anytime because it's captured all in, in one place. Um, but to answer your question about how it can make you a stronger expert, it, uh, it lets you get your thoughts out, your processes out. It lets you collect and augment those from uh, external sources, uh, such as the web, or if you went to a conference and they had info on that, and you get some handout, you can snap pictures with your phone, get it right into Evernote, tagged and word searchable straight out of the images. You can run it through the Evernote scanner. I've got one right there. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so, so if you're a you know a leadership expert or a marketing expert or a health and fitness expert or a technology expert, I think the big takeaway here is that you're capable of so much more. And it's not that you need to become a cyborg and merge with the machine. It's just about <laughs> augmenting. You can basically empty the cup a little bit and allow. You can carry more with you just outsourcing some of the organization and cataloging to something like Evernote. So if you teach a special kind of yoga, then, uh, you know, and you, you go to retreats uh, in um, India or you're researching some science that you're going to combine with some yoga and some nutrition and, and make this interesting thing and run experiments on yourself or whatever, um, you know, you need a way to enable that, that creativity for, oh, okay, I, I, I heard this little tidbit of science that I might try to integrate into my practice or whatever. That's really cool. Yeah, and that's right when you, you'd capture it. And speaking of the, the trip to India, um, I, I travel a ton. I was in eight cities in five countries in, in January and did uh, 14 live webinars. And so every one of these trips, I just make a new note and uh, tag it travel, tag it whatever city or mastermind or event I'm speaking at. And then I, I just have like four or five basic lines. One says flight, one says hotel or Airbnb, meeting agenda, uh, talking points or whatever I'm speaking about. And um, it's the cleanest thing ever. And you can just make a shortcut to it. But all of those hyperlink internally within Evernote to when I want the flight info, I just touch flight and it goes straight to my flight info. So you can integrate it into your everyday workflows, no matter what you're doing, certainly for course building, but everything else in your business and your life to just simplify. So you don't have to hunt for the confirmation email in Google about your trip itinerary. 
because it's just one touch away on something you have sitting in your hand waiting for you. So it's being proactive and just having systems that you do every time that just make everything easier. I mean, will it make your life perfect? No. Will it help a lot? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the way you say that it allows you to be proactive and make your life easier. Followed on that is then that makes space for something else to come in, whether it's a creative idea or, you know, extra time or less stress. I mean, those, these are all good things if you're working on an expertise and a passion that you love. Now let's talk about the actual active course building um, or, you know, instructional design, like, Oh, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to do uh, a video course? Am I going to have office hours? Am I going to have a webinar? Am I going to do a mastermind? Or is it going to be passive income or is it going to be highly active? And as I get into all these instructional design questions, uh, how could I use this Evernote? Well, uh, you could map out what your different options are, what the pros and cons are, what the fastest way to kind of monetize so you don't drown in the meantime. Um, you can make plan out like the simplest approach to get started and what your next iteration will be to build on it. Because uh, something I had to fight and resist in myself was, I'm like, well, if I'm making an Evernote course, uh, I need to cover absolutely every piece of the tool, how you could use it in any situation. People don't want that. They want to know how to get up and going quickly. So if you're, if you're at all battling the concept that you can't release this course because it's not perfect and doesn't cover everything yet, um, please do yourself and your students the favor. Just get started because anything that's lacking, they'll let you know about. And anything that's great, they'll let you know about that too. So you can keep optimizing and iterating. Um, I'll also note that uh, every time I work with a partner at the end of a, a webinar or promotion, I ask them, what do you think could be better about the webinar? What do you think could be better about the course? Because I go through the course too. Um, so you're constantly eliciting feedback that's collected in Evernote under a tag like continuous improvement and the name of your course. So later when you're like, okay, cool, I'm going to block half a day and just keep improving this course, now you've got this easy place to go get your checklist that otherwise would have been forgotten, would have been lost in inboxes, would have been on handwritten notes left somewhere in your office that you'd never get to. So what you're doing really is enabling your own opportunity and your own path to um, create the best thing you can while um, getting it out there sooner. I love that. I love that. And if you're researching, if you're seeing what other people are doing and you like want to, you know, c catalog, a, you know, different types of courses or uh, sales pages or whatever that you can come back to and look at it one place and be like, okay, this is what I see is the industry seems to be doing. I do that all the time. I'll, I'll see something and whether or not I'll be using what they're offering, I'll tag it as example like here's an example live event landing page that i like here's an example uh email copy that seemed effective because it got my attention um so you can just capture them that way as they the, the one of the biggest secrets is doing it in real time if, if something if that little ding bell sound goes off in your head of ah that's your cue capture it never know right now and then you'll have it when you need it. That's really cool. What is the difference between uh, like a project management software like Asana, Basecamp, Trello? Like you could capture ideas in there, like, but in those tools, but what makes Evernote special and different from project management tools? Okay, so these two things are different. They do play very nicely together. Um, and I use all of the above. So um, Evernote's still the, the core repository collection idea generation and capture space. But like out of a, a meeting with your team, um, inevitably there'll be actions as there should be. So basically you can capture the core ideas or, or goals of what you're doing. And then when you start breaking those down into tasks, then go right ahead, 
put them in a sauna or Trello or base camp. And uh, this, this is how I do it. So let's say you and I had a meeting and we we're working on a, a smaller project together. We talk through what we want to do, who's going to be responsible for what. Then we start breaking it down into uh, actions which are put in the project management uh, tools, but I'll just make a link to the Evernote note or notebook that has the bigger collection of ideas. So when you do get around to working on a task two weeks from now, you're like, okay, I kind of get this, but I wish I had a little more context. Well, it's a click away. You click the hyperlink, it takes you to the Evernote note where you're like, oh yeah, that's what we were talking about. And then you're off and running. So they they work together seamlessly um, by simply a couple of best practices like hyperlinking to the notes that generated those tasks. You also, uh, it sounds like the way you tag things is very intelligent. So is it, it's also like the way you can search and f like find things, right? Because I've noticed with project management tools, if you use them for something like you would use Evernote for, once the once the bucket gets too full, it's, you can't even look at it or it's not as useful. But um, uh, yeah. But what, how, what's, your, what's your tag 101 philosophy? We don't have to go super deep on it, but like how do you use tags or how do you organize? I mean, it makes, as the bucket gets full, like how do, how do people look through it? Yeah, so probably depends on the context. I, I might be a, a little... Um, more conservative with tags in a project setting like a sauna. But in Evernote, I used to not want a bunch of tags because I didn't want it to get too, uh, too crazy. But what I found is um, it's okay to be generous with tags. You still want to be intelligent with the naming of the tag. Um, and you will develop muscle memory for what a, a good tag would be. Um, in general, I'll, I'll use between one and three tags per note. And they're, they're pretty basic. Let's use a meeting with you and I. I would use your name as a tag. That's pretty straightforward. And then depending on what we were, I would also use, I use a tag called notes, so I can pull up notes from any meeting. Um, and then I would base it on the context of the discussion. If we were talking about a book launch, guess what the tag would be? Um, and then that's basically it. Like if we were both working with a third-party company or if we were both using some other third-party tool, I'd throw that tag in there as well. And you don't need to go nuts with them, but they give you this very powerful path to find information depending on the context your brain thinks of them on. So if we were talking about a launch, I can pull up the tag launch and our notes will happen to be there. Or if you call me tomorrow, um, or send me a text asking me for something, I can pull up your name as the tag and see where we left off. Um, so it enables multiple paths back to information based on the context that, that they're coming up again or you're, you're thinking about them again. So, uh, yeah, I think you can be a little bit generous with how you use tags. Um, like if I'm going to any particular city, I will tag the note um, like Toronto or or San Diego or, or wherever as well, because it just gives you one more access point to uh, get back to that. Like, I thought of this great idea in San Diego. What was that? Well, you could search the tag San Diego. You could search the tag ideas. That's really cool. I, I think we really overestimate how much we actually remember. Like, I think we do forget <laughs> a lot of things. And that's, but I know that feeling like, oh, I had this great idea in, in, at that business trip in San Diego. Like, what was that? You know, because you got it's the this. worst feeling to yeah. not, and and every time you will trick yourself. You're like, this idea is so amazing. There's no way I'll forget it. You'll forget it in ten minutes. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah. Period. <laughs> and the and the relationship stuff. I mean, you know, like your deep relationships. But if you're doing things where you're interacting with a lot of people, but at a, in a high touch way. Uh, you may get on the phone with somebody or enter into a, a conversation and they're like, Hey Chris, remember the last time I talked to you about blah, blah, blah. And like, you're feverishly like searching through your email to be like, who is this guy? I don't remember. All. Like you, you don't have to do that. If you, no. if you literally map it with Evernote and kind of curate 
your relationships a little bit. You're right. And I, I will tell you the, the reason we've been able, the reason I've been able to get partners like Brian Tracy, Asian efficiency, productivity as Chris Winfield, the list goes on, but it's because I've been able to um, keep in touch and, uh, basically track where I'm at with, with each person, like where we left off, what they're focusing on that I could contribute to. If you don't write that stuff down, you, you may not remember it. And I also use Evernote in conjunction with a CRM tool called Close, C-L-O-Z-E, and it integrates with your Google Calendar and Gmail and Evernote so that... Um, any emails from you or meetings we've had would show up there. Any Evernote notes with uh, with your name in them will show up there. And that way, because I meet with probably two to five people a day. I think I have eight meetings today. Um, so, yeah, it, it, is, uh, it is probably the only method you'd be able to use to really deepen those relationships and see – exactly where you left off and that's how i'm able to book two to six joint venture webinars every week that's awesome that's that's really incredible well let's talk about technology using technology for your course i know because at lifter lms we get tons of email like five paragraph emails like does your platform do this 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 and this or i was here but i didn't like this platform and can you help me all these things People do a ton of research before investing in online course software. And the big reason for that is because they're going to be tied to it for a while. They're going to invest all this energy and build all this stuff. They want to make the right decision. So how could Evernote help with that person trying to figure out or optimize the learning technology piece? Okay, so when you dive into the research, you're going to be starting to find those sites that compare who does what, what their pricing is, the different models, the strengths, weaknesses, pros, cons. Uh, Evernote's perfect for that because A, you can capture your own thoughts on the way. B, as you are on those sites, you can start capturing them with the web clipper into Evernote. So later you can kind of compare these things. Um, and it is really important. I, I come from a technology background and even I was surprised how many tools and integrations can be involved. And in fact, there's some really smart people with a lot to contribute, but they're kind of afraid of the technology because there's, there's so many pieces. So, and what I found Uh, When I was doing my research, you guys for the WordPress side were the top of the list. Just like unequivocally, that's who I recommend uh, to people. Um, I also was checking out some of the SaaS solutions, um, such as uh, New Kajabi. And uh, actually, I opted for Kajabi. I built everything in there because it was simple and integrated and then found the simplicity was also very limiting because there was lack of customization, lack of duplicating of training courses. And it was sad for me because the platform was great, but um, not for someone like me who needs a little more horsepower. Um, And I opted to be able to uh, base, I went with ClickFunnels for the the funnel side because it's very flexible and powerful there. Um, but now that I've got a course that's successful and out to thousands of people, I want to be able to track how far along people are. I want to offer gamification. I want to offer quizzes and, um, I want to offer a membership area. So, uh, I, you know, as our team expands, we're up to five people now, we're looking at revamping the course and we want more powerful course tools. And so I'll be back in the same boat of uh, figuring out if we're going to, you know, just up level where we're at or, or change platforms to something a lot more powerful and integrated uh, like Lifter. Cool. Very cool. Well, if you're listening to this and you'd like to find out more about Evernote, make sure you're on the Lifter LMS email list and we're, we're going to be sending out an invite to this webinar that, that we're going to do with Charles and really go deeper into uh, how to use Evernote and why it's awesome. 
But let's talk a little bit about the why. You're known as the kill the chaos guy, Charles Bird with Evernote. Why? What, like, how, how do you help? And, and just tell us, talk a little bit about the why. And I just want to say that a lot of course creators, I think, carry it in even heavier than average amount of overwhelm simply because, you know, they're creative. They have all these ideas. Um, they've got this course to build, this business to run, students to teach, families to feed at home or whatever. Like, it's, they're, they got a lot going on. So, Help, yeah, I'll, help the listener. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll speak to my why. It's actually um, a, a story I tell f- frequently. But um, bef- before I do, I, I had a call I think yesterday with uh, a guy who wants to build courses, and he was saying how they were building lead magnets and running Facebook tests to quizzes to figure out what type of uh, course content would be the best received and that was funneling to this and that and I'm just like dude just don't do that you're you're like you're going off the deep end into the technology trying to make this perfect thing instead of just sitting down and building something just make a Facebook post saying uh, I I'm thinking of making a course on these three things which would be most useful for you done like I just saved that dude three weeks of unnecessary work right. um, <clears throat> But as far as the big why, um, I've been, uh, you know, an Evernote fan for a long time. I'm a certified Evernote consultant. Um, and I just remember my, my mom, she ran, um, she ran a hospital in Central California. She was a teacher for College of the Sequoias and a floor nurse in the OB department. So she'd come home with all these boxes of, of uh, you know, those cardboard office boxes full of binders and papers and this and that and it like boxes and boxes of them and it was like kind of just normal for the job but also ridiculous because like carrying that back and forth doesn't help so I did what any good son would do I got a brand new Mac and a Nevernote scanner and taught her how to use that and um, it really started improving her whole workflow her quality of life around it and she'd tell her students all about it and got them very excited and then Basically, um, one day I got a call. I was working at the Starbucks, and um, my mom and stepdad kind of had that serious tone in their voice, and so I'm thinking maybe one of the kids they adopted were in trouble at school or who knows. Um, And instead, my mom had been in a minor car accident, and then the next day was reaching for a fork and kept missing it like repeatedly. So they took her to the hospital, found she had two stage four brain tumors. She went into surgery that night. And um, anyway, the uh, the outcome of that was then we had to transition all her work for her three jobs. We had to start researching the hell out of medical care. Um, and <clears throat> basically, the office went from being kind of messy to you couldn't even see the desk under all the papers and um, her inbox stopped accepting emails. Anyway, I used the same tools I gave her to fix that problem so we could put our finger on anything, get her the best care. And what it did was it improved the quality of her life. She lived one year from when we found that out. So she had better quality of life, better care. And it also made me realize that we only have a certain amount of time here on this planet. So if there's things we want to do, we need a system to kick their butt. We need a way, we need systems we can trust. We need tools and workflows that enable us to do what we want to do in the time we have. And it's a quality of life question. How much do you want to be overloaded and buried and drowning and stressed? I, I would venture to say probably not. So if, if I can teach you a path to really turn the volume down on that, uh, that's that's my passion. That's why I decided to make this course. That's why I reach thousands of people every week and month with this message. Because if I can improve your life and enable you to meet your goals, that's going to have a ripple effect for all the people you interact with, people you serve, your own families, and your own mental health. Um, so if, if I'm successful at this, which uh, so far so good, uh, and you are successful based on learning a new trick or two or three um, by coming to our webinar, 
um, then everyone wins. And that's, that's the power of course building. That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your, your story with us and your, your why. That's, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Um, all right. If you're listening, be sure to sign up and be on the mailing list at Lifter LMS so you can hear about Charles's webinar and he's going to go a lot deeper into this. And uh, Charles, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. I had so many aha moments. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I got Evernote several years ago and then I stopped using it. But I'm going to recommit, especially when the way you were talking about I'm a power project manager, management guy, you know, communication. I, I'm juggling a lot of things. I'm going to recommit and go through your training. And, uh, you know, I, just, I definitely appreciate learning from someone who's like honed the craft, which you have with Evernote. So I'm going to recommit to Evernote and see what I can do with it and see what that does for me. So thank you so much for coming on the show. If, if people want to find out more about you or connect with you, where can they find you? Sure. Uh, so we've got uh, to, to get info on our company, it's birdword.com, B-Y-R-D-W-O-R-D.com. And uh, we're also big fans of Killing the Chaos. We have uh, killthechaos.pro, um, which has a little info uh, on the course. But uh, I'd like to encourage you to sign up on Chris's email list because when we do offer a webinar to the community we're, we're all part of here, we're course builders, um, I, I want to line up a, a really nice discount for you guys. So if you do go to killthecast.pro, that's the full price, which uh, buy it at that if you'd like, but I'd prefer you uh, get it at half off um, working with Chris here. So yeah, Chris, such a pleasure to uh, be on the show with you. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming and uh, thank you for inspiring me to get going and uh, start leveraging uh, Evernote. So thank you. You bet.